Seeing none, any members of the public wish to address the committee on this issue? Seeing none, I'll now ask the staff to read the recommendation and call the roll. Inmate digital instruction materials. Staff recommendation is to approve as proposed. Senator Block? Aye. Senator Morlock? Aye. Senator Allen? Aye. Please show that passing 3-0 and close the roll. Moving on now to item number four, basic skills proposal. Start with the LAO. Judy Hyman, Legislative Analyst Office. In January, the governor proposed a $30 million augmentation ongoing for the basic skills initiative. At that time, we recommended redirecting this augmentation to an existing one-time basic skills and student outcomes transformation grant program for colleges to redesign their basic skills programs. Since that time, the chancellor's office has awarded the full 60 million that was available for the grant program in funding to 43 eligible colleges. Another 21 colleges were eligible for another $30 million in awards but didn't receive funding. We continue to think the state would be better served by funding additional transformation of basic skills practices before increasing ongoing funding for the program. As such, we recommend that you redirect the governor's proposed $30 million augmentation to fund the eligible grant appl applicants that were not funded. In addition, we have one more concern we wanted to raise about the proposed trailer bill language. Uh, the May revision requires notification and concurrence of our office and the Department of Finance on factors to include in the funding formula for this program. The January proposal required only Department of Finance concurrence. We do not believe that that's an appropriate role for our office to be approving an administrative allocation. Instead, um, our role would be to raise any concerns to you. So notification of the legislature would be a more appropriate um, uh, approach. Thank you. Let's move to finance. Keith Nizam, Department of Finance. Uh, we continue to support the governor's budget and May revision um, to increase ongoing basic skills funding by $30 million uh, through a revised formula that considers district effectiveness in providing remedial instruction rather than solely on the population of students that require remedial instruction. And do you continue to think that LAO should be involved in the process? Yes, we, we feel that um, that would provide a level of um, kind of uh, transparency in that, you know, not only the Department of Finance would be reviewing the modifications of the formula, but the legislature would also have a, a voice in the, uh, in the formula modifications. So if I may follow up on that, I think what we would do is just uh, make a technical change within that language to say in consultation with uh, the LAO, and I think that would appease their concern. And does that meet your concerns, Ms. Hyland? I'm sure we could come up with language along I'm those sure. lines that would meet our concerns. Thank you. Chancellor's Office? Mario Rodriguez of the Chancellor's Office. Yeah, we, we, we liked the Senate's version much better than the administration's version. Um, so we're supportive of that. Okay, thank you. Uh, questions or comments from committee members? Seeing none, any comments from members of the public? Ryan McElhaney with the Community College League of California, representing California's 72 community college districts. And uh, we just wanted to say we're very appreciative of the changes that the Senate is proposing to make, and we support them. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no further comments, no further questions or comments here among committee members, I'll ask staff to please read the recommendation and call the roll. <clears throat> Basic skills proposal staff recommendation is to amend budget bill language and adopt placeholder trailer bill language to one, remove the allocation formula. Two, direct the chancellor's office to convene a working group um, with relevant stakeholders to determine the allocation of funds. And three, redirect the additional $30 million in 2016-17 to fill eligible transformation grant applicants that, that did not receive funding. Senator Block? Aye. Senator Morlock? Aye. Senator Allen? Aye. Please show that passing 3-0. Close the roll. Move on to item number five, zero textbook cost degrees. Let's hear from the Legislative Analyst Office. Judy Hyman, Legislative Analyst Office. In January, the governor proposed a $5 million one-time program for community colleges to develop zero textbook cost degree pathways. That is degrees, uh, pathways that students could complete without paying for any textbook costs. The May revision proposal reduces the grant amount from 500,000 per degree pathway to 200,000 per degree 
program. It requires that grantees strive to begin offering the programs by fall of 2018, and it provides several other modifications and clarifications that we think are helpful. We uh, recommend approving these changes. Several of the governor's proposed changes address concerns that we raised in January. We further recommend requiring the chancellor's office to coordinate this program with related initiatives in the state, including an ongoing open educational resource adoption grant program for community colleges and CSU. And we also uh, wanted to suggest that you could consider linking this program with the need that was just discussed regarding um, educational resources for inmates in state prisons. Um, perhaps a portion of this funding could help provide free open educational resource uh, materials for courses for students in prisons. Thank you. Administration, Department of Finance. Keith Nizam, Department of Finance. The LAO has done a good job in summarizing our May revision proposal. Um, happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Chancellor's Office. Uh, we're supportive of the proposal. Um, some of the uh, comments that Ms. Hyman made are, are spot on. Uh, the fact that whenever we get a new initiative that's coming in, um, such as this, we do try to link it as best we can with other initiatives that are floating around. So whether the language is in there or not about us trying to link this together with the OER initiative that we're already down the road on, um, we'd be doing that. So supportive of that language as well. Thank you. Public comment. Good afternoon, um, Addie Myers on behalf of the California Association of College Stores. In this proposal, we were hoping to see the stores um, specifically named in the multi-member team approach section of the language. Um, we um, have submitted a letter to the committee and uh, proposed uh, language, which is really just a simple two-word amendment. So we would hope the, uh, the committee could consider that as this moves forward. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Any other members of the public wish to speak to this item? Any questions or comments from committee members? Uh, seeing none, I'll ask staff, whoop, Senator Morlock. <clears throat> I just don't see it as zero textbook cost. I see I see a pretty hefty price here, and um, I'm, 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 I'm still having trouble with this one, Mr. Sure. Chair. Thank you, Senator Morlock. With that, if there are no further comments or questions, I'll ask staff to read the recommendation and call the roll. Staff recommendation is to approve placeholder trailer bill language. Senator Block? Aye. Senator Morlock? No. Senator Allen? No. Please show that passing two to one and close the roll. We move on now to item number six, strong workforce program. Judy Hyman, Legislative Analyst Office. The governor's January proposal funded a new strong workforce program with $200 million in Proposition 98 General Fund. The purpose of the new program was to expand the availability of high quality CTE career technical education courses and programs. The um, proposal would have allocated funding to <coughs> regional collaboratives of community colleges, other education providers, civic organizations, workforce development boards, and labor and industry groups. The May revision proposal revises the funding allocation to designate 40% of total funding to be allocated to those regional collaboratives. The remaining 60% would be allocated directly to districts using the same allocation formula as proposed in January. Um, and the funding to districts would be for re regionally prioritized activities. No more than 60% of the district amount could be used for ongoing costs. The May revision proposal also strengthens requirements for developing expedited CTE course and program approval processes at the state and local levels and directs the chancellor's office our office and the Department of Finance to investigate the potential consolidation of community college CTE programs within this larger program. We recommend approving most of the proposed changes to the workforce program. We would note that the Strong Workforce Task Force identified equipment purchase and renewal and other one-time costs as a significant barrier not only to starting or expanding programs but also for keeping them up to date with current industry technology and practices. Limiting the share of funding that can be used for one-time purposes, uh, I'm sorry, for ongoing purposes, would help, that ensure, help ensure that some resources remain available over time for these recurring one-time costs. And we are concerned that without a set-aside for one-time funding, the state likely would find itself in the same position it's been in for the last few years, where CTE programs are struggling to keep their equipment up to date. We 
uh, similar to the basic skills proposal, we recommend modifying this proposal to remove the requirement for LAO approval of the proposed funding allocations. Um, and I think we'd be happy with the solution uh, as we discussed for that program. So. Thank you. Finance. Sure. At this time, um, we're not in a position to support the staff's recommendation for the additional changes to the trailer bill, um, but we'll certainly uh, look at this uh, as we move forward. Great. Thank you. Chancellor's office. Uh, generally speaking, we, we support uh, the the staff recommendation here. I think we the changes we just recently uh, found out about the elimination of the uh, sixty percent for ongoing versus one time. So we're still trying to delve through that, figure out what the right percentage is. Um, we'll get back to you guys when we okay. figure that out. Thank you. Thank you. Questions or comments from members of the committee? Seeing none, any members of the public wish to address the committee on this issue? Ryan McElhaney with the Community College League of California, representing California 72 community college districts, and uh, we're uh, very supportive of the staff recommendations to remove that 60% cap, but we do note that it would still be a regional district approach, and, and we, we, are, we do feel that the 60-40 split is um, too big, and we're, we're looking for more for a 70-30 or another split, so thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Jonathan Lightman on behalf of the Faculty Association of California Community Colleges. We also support lifting up the cap. And we would uh, like consideration of a 70-30 split or at least a 70-30 option, and we have no position on the consolidation of the two programs. Thank you. Next speaker. Jill Rice with the California Federation of <coughs> Teachers, and I'm just going to say a me too in the interest of time. Thank you. Next speaker. Nicole Rice, California Manufacturers and Technology Association. And we, too, are generally supportive of the language that we see coming out of the May revise. Um, still considering and reviewing the staff recommendation, but there's one thing that we did want to point out is the whole concept of building what we feel is a duplicative regional structure instead of just going with the existing regional structure that already exists. And I think those points are made throughout the language about not trying to duplicate efforts that already exist. So we would just encourage the committee to look at that as well. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. The the. Difference between a 60 40 split and a 70 30 split. You've heard the speakers. Any comments on that? LAO or anybody? <coughs> no comments? Okay, well, in that, or did you want to make a comment, Ms. Hammond? Okay. Um, well, we heard you, the people who came up and talked about 70 30 split, and we will work with staff and, and take another look at that. So thank you for the comments. Um, with that, of course, the motion is as it is written here. Um, I'd ask staff to read the motion and call the roll. Approve budget bill language and modify trailer bill language to remove the requirement that not more than 60% of funds provided to districts could be used for ongoing costs and adopt trailer bill language to extend the CTE Pathways program for one year and state legislative intent that beginning in 2017-18, the CTE Pathways may be a part of the Strong Workforce Program. Senator Block? Aye. Senator Morlock? Senator Allen? Aye. Please show that passing two to one, close the roll. And again, be assured that we will be looking at the 70-30 versus 60-40. Moving on to item number seven, restore various categorical programs, LAO. Judy Hyman, Legislative Analyst Office. This is a staff proposal. Your staff recommends increasing funding for the student services for CalWORKs recipients program, the part-time faculty office hours categorical program and the fund for student success, which includes the Puente and Mesa projects to bring them back to pre-recession levels. The total increase would be $14.7 million, and the specific increases are in your agenda. Thank you. Department of Finance. Keith Nizam, Department of Finance. Uh, we continue to support the governor's uh, May revision, which does not include these adjustments. Um, and we're not, we're not able to support these at this time. And we would also just note that there's uh, approximately more than $400 million in recent categorical pr um, funding increases that serve similar purposes as these categoricals. And we would just want to note that for the record. Thank you. Chancellor's Office. Mario Rodriguez of the Chancellor's Office. Uh, these programs are, you know, some, pro some of these programs right here are really high bank, uh, produce a high bang for the buck. 
um, when you talk about um, so much of our money goes out for providing you know access and instruction, these programs really provide that wraparound service <coughs> to ensure that those students are going to be successful in that in that uh, instruction. We support that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Chair's particularly happy to see 3.66 million proposed for part-time faculty office hours, which I think given the large number of part-time faculty and frankly should be smaller, we should have more full-time. But if we're gonna have these many part-time, it's important that they have the office hours to be able to serve students um, in an efficient and effective manner. Any other comments or questions from members? Any members of the public wish to address the item? Jonathan Lightman on behalf of the Faculty Association, California Community Colleges, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Jonathan. Um, with that, if there are no further comments or questions, I'll ask staff to um, read the recommendation and open the roll for a vote. Adopt budget bill language to restore funding to the student success services for CalWORKs recipients and part-time faculty office hours and fund for student success. Senator Block? Aye. Senator Morlock? No. Senator Allen? Aye. Please show that passing two to one and close the roll. Moving on now to item number eight, Early Care and Education Pilot Program, LAO. This is a staff proposal. Your staff recommends providing 1.4 million one time over three years to the LA Trade Tech Community College for job training, mentoring, and college courses through an early care and education apprenticeship pilot program. According to the proposal, the project would enroll <coughs> A total of 150 workers helping participants become licensed, access free college level coursework, receive paid on the job training and coaching, benefit from peer support, and advance to higher levels of credentialing within their industry. Thank you. Finance? Keith Azam, Department of Finance. This is a new proposal to us. Um, we're not able to support, the, support it at this time. <laughs> Thank you. Community colleges? Mario Rodriguez with the Chancellor's Office. Uh, yeah, a new proposal to us. Um, Looks like it has merit, but don't have a position on it. Thank you. Understood. Questions or comments from members of the committee? Senator Marlin. Just a comment that my no votes are to support the Department of Finance and the governor's budget. Uh, that's been sort of my trend today. I'm sure the governor appreciates that. Thank you. Well, that's um, not what I was looking for. <laughs> I'll we'll sign your bill. Um, okay, now we move to members of the public who wish to comment on this item. Please come forward. Good afternoon, Mary Gutierrez with the California State Council of the Service Employees International Union in strong support of this proposal. As you know, we face a crisis here in California with the lack of qualified early care and education workers. That's only about to increase with increasing demands for training from the federal government. This proposal would help us get to a point where we can actually pilot something in Los Angeles County that we can learn from statewide to make sure that these ECE workers are providing the best early education and care possible for our kids. So we ask for your support on this proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Any further comments? Any further questions from members of the committee or comments? <clears throat> Seeing none, I'll ask staff to read the recommendation and open the roll. Adopt placeholder trailer mill language to provide $1.4 million on time, a uh, one-time uh, Proposition 98 general fund to LA Trade Tech College to provide job training, mentoring, and college courses through the Early Care and Education Apprenticeship Program. Senator Block? Aye. Senator Morlock? No. Senator Allen? Aye. Please show that passing 2-1 and close the roll. Moving on now to item number nine, increased base apportionment funding to reflect increased operation expenses. LAO. Judy Hyman, Legislative Analyst Office. This is a new May revision proposal to provide $75 million in general purpose funding through apportionments. We recommend adoption given the additional resources available at the May revise. We think it makes sense to provide some flexible resources to districts that they could use toward their highest priorities. If, um, with your permission, Mr. Chair, I'd like to also mention another apportionment issue that's come to our attention just in sure. this last week. The Governor's January budget recommended 2% enrollment growth for 2016-17. The May revision makes no change to the enrollment proposal, but the apportionment reports, the enrollment reports that we've received this week indicate that the system is falling below the January and May revision level by about 12,000 FTEs. We recommend reducing the current year, 2015-16, 
enrollment funding by $60 million to reflect these latest reports. We recommend also reducing 2016-17 funding by the same amount just to reflect the lower base moving forward, but still providing 2% enrollment growth funding above that lower base. That would ensure sufficient funding next year in the event that colleges begin to see more ro robust enrollment growth next year. Um, and then you could always revisit the issue next year and, and see if that looks adequate. Thank you. Department of Finance. Sure. Uh, specific to the to uh, Ms. Hyman's comment, we think that it's entirely plausible that between uh, point in time P2 and annual, which is next February, it's entirely plausible to see an uptick that would cover the entire amount of growth. To the extent that that doesn't materialize, those funds do return to the state for reconsideration in future budgets. Thank you. Chancellor's office. Uh, Mr. Ferguson's comments are exactly right. Oh, Mario Rodriguez with the, with the California Community College Chancellor's Office. Mr. Ferguson's comments are exactly right. Uh, it's not uncommon to see, um, you, you know, this early in the year, second term hasn't even ended yet. It's just ending right now. Um, the enrollment estimates are getting better, but they're still an estimate. When the year ends and when summer fully closes, that's when we'll get to know what really happened this year. And it's very it's it's it could very well happen that the that um, we actually do achieve the full full growth. The scarier impact of that, in our opinion, in our office's opinion, is that when we talk to CBOs, our chief business officials at colleges, our chief instructional officers, what they said is that you know we get it when the state's cutting Prop 98 and we have to do mid-year cuts and it changes what our what our growth projection would have been. We get that. We understand we're a function of Prop 98. But in good years, if every year our colleges were just assuming that, well, every year there might be a mid-year cut, it would actually hurt the long run in the long run as we try to restore access to certain communities. And so that, that trying to prevent that fear in the back of people's minds, to us, it's a, it, saving money this year would be a, a, a high risk that we could run uh, lowering access in the future. So we're not supportive of that, but we are supportive of the staff's recommendation of increasing the amount. Uh, for base increase. Okay, thank you. And the 2% growth, um, that's not system-wide, am I correct? It's if a district has more, then they would get the 2% or they would, they'd get funding to match the growth, and if a district falls under, they would just get less. So there'd be winners and losers, theoretically, which is not a problem, just, you know. Yeah, so we fund districts that grow. So some districts, when you say 2% growth, every district gets roughly their share of 2%, but if some districts don't grow, then that 2% will go to districts that are growing at 4%. So, and that's known throughout the system, and our system still advocates for 2%. So even if the system is below, the money would be used by districts that are growing within the system, is that correct? Correct. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments from committee members? Any members of the public wish to address the committee on this issue? Issue number nine. Ryan McElhaney with the Community College League of California, and uh, we just wanted to thank the staff for recommending to increase the base augmentation. Uh, this is invaluable flexibility in our state's budget to increase the quality of our educational pro programs and meet uh, increasing operational costs. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Jonathan Lightman on behalf of the Faculty Association of California Community Colleges. We support this, and we would also encourage the committee to consider budget bill language to encourage the districts to use part of this money to increase the ratio of full-time hiring. Thank you. Um, any other members of the public wish to address the committee on this item? Seeing none. Any other comments or questions from committee members? Seeing none, I'll ask staff to read the recommendation and call the roll. Adopt modified budget bill language to increase base apportionment by $10.29 million for a total of 85.29. Uh, Senator Block? Aye. Senator Morlock? No. Senator Allen? Aye. Please show that passing 2-1 and close the roll. Moving on now to item number 10, adult education. Begin with the LAO. Judy Hyman, Legislative Analyst Office. This May revision proposal provides $5 million in one-time Proposition 98 general fund for technical assistance to adult education consortia. Although many of the consortia have successfully transitioned to the new model for <laughs> providing adult education, and are working well together. Others continue to struggle with establishing the necessary relationships and structures for effective collaboration. We believe this additional one-time funding could help these consortia come together 
and help all consortia in the state improve their practices and outcomes through better coordination, professional development, and targeted technical assistance. We recommend adoption. Thank you. Department of Finance. Keith Nizam, Department of Finance. The LAO did a very good job of summarizing the Mary Vision proposal. Uh, we'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Chancellor's Office. Uh, Mario Rodriguez, the Chancellor's Office. Uh, we're supportive of the staff's recommendation. Thank you. Any questions or comments from committee members? Any members of the public wish to address the committee on this item? Seeing none, I'll ask staff to read the recommendation and call the roll. Approved as pr proposed with trailable language to be refined as necessary. Senator Block? Aye. Senator Morlock? Aye. Senator Allen? Aye. Please show that passing 3-0 and close the roll. Uh, moving on to item number 11, also dealing with adult education. I'd ask LAO to present. Judy Hyman, Legislative Analyst Office. This is a staff proposal. Your staff recommends adding trailer bill language to amend the date that adult education outcomes reporting is required under statute from September 30th to a two-part report that would be due uh, preliminarily on October 30th and a final report on January 1st of each year. Staff also recommends adding trailer bill language to require a report from the community college chancellor and the superintendent of public instruction no later than August 1st, 2017, on options for integrating adult education assessments into the community college common assessment system that's currently being implemented. Staff also recommends adding supplemental reporting language that would direct the chancellor and superintendent to report by January 1st, 2017, to the Director of Finance, the State Board, and the Legislature on their progress in aligning their data systems as required by statute. Thank you. Department of Finance. Keith Nizam, Department of Finance. This is a new uh, proposal to our office. Uh, we're not in a position to support it at this time. Okay, thank you. Community College Chancellors. Hi, Mario Rodriguez, the Chancellor's Office. Um, same deal, a little new to us, but uh, it looks like it we should be able to do it, but I just want to make sure we get the timelines right and with the, with our workload and we're able to accomplish it. Sure. Questions, comments from other members of the committee? Seeing none, any members of the public wish to address the board on <coughs> item number 11? Seeing none, I will ask the staff to read the recommendation and call the roll. Approve placeholder trailer bill language and placeholder supplemental reporting language as proposed to be refined as necessary. Senator Block? Aye. Senator Morlock? Aye. Senator Allen. Aye. Please show that passing 3-0 and close the roll. We are now on item number 12, our last item of our last issue. Um, outreach funding for the Board of Governors Fee Waiver Program and the Baccalaureate Degree Program. Haleo's office. Judy Hyman, Legislative Analyst Office. This is a staff proposal to provide $5 million one time for outreach that would promote the Board of Governors the availability of Board of Governors fee waivers, as well as the new baccalaureate degree pilot program. Thank you. Department of Finance. Keith Nizam, Department of Finance. This is also a new proposal to our department. Uh, we're not able to support it at this time. Chancellor's Office. Mario Rodriguez of the Chancellor's Office, uh, still reviewing the proposal, but it looks like it does have merit. Okay, thank you. Any members of the public wish to address this item? I just had one comment. Uh, there was a meeting today with the Community College League of California where they suggested these two items uh, which uh, staff thought was, was appropriate. And uh, um, we will vote on them now if there are no further questions or comments. Okay, I'll ask staff to read the recommendation. Open the roll. Approved placeholder trailer bill language to provide $5 million one time. For outreach on the Board of Governors fee waiver and baccalaureate degree pilot program. Senator Block? Aye. Senator Morlock? No. Senator Allen? Aye. Please show this passing 2-1 and close the roll. With that, is there any other item for business today? Anything else we need to discuss? I see Elisa has come back in. In your absence, I thank you for all of your hard work on the K-12 portion of our agenda. Thank Anita again for all of her hard work on the uh, university and community college portion of our agenda. Thank Cheryl on doing work on all of the agenda for the Republican side. And thank our speakers, both members of the public and panels, for a great job today. And thank you for your attention. We are now adjourned. Such a nice guy.
Thank you, everybody.